Hi there, it's Lori from Lollipop Paper and Ink. Thanks so much for joining me today and welcome to my stamp studio. And also welcome back to my week of sneak peeks from the brand new upcoming mini catalog. The July to December mini catalog will be out uh, on Tuesday, August 3rd. So that's very exciting. Along with that is our celebration event, which is a two month event just from August 3rd to, to um, the end of September, September 30th. So um, if you don't have your catalogs, paper catalogs in hand and you would like one from me, uh, just give me a message or an email or a phone call and I'll be happy to get one out to you. Okay, so today, we are doing our fourth or fifth um, sneak peek from the catalog and I could not wait to get into this beautiful die. It is, uh, it's called the Pretty Pillow Box Dies and that's exactly what they are. And they make the most adorable tiny um, little pillow boxes for all sorts of goodies that you could put inside there. So we're gonna make two, um, cause I, I tested it and I wanted to show you how easy it is. We're going to make one out of DSP and one out of the new um, craft paper that is um, in, the, in the new catalog also. So this is the die and it is part of the um, sweet, the gingerbread and peppermint sweet. And yesterday I did a sneak peek on the actual bundle in that set. So this doesn't come with a specific stamp set, it's just part of the suite. This is the stamp set bundle that is included in that suite. So that's called Frosted Gingerbread. So we are gonna be using those um, sentiments and um, a few of those little uh, dies that we can use from here. So, okay, let's get started. Oh, I'm also, for this first one, we're using the uh, DSP, the Gingerbread and Peppermint 6x6 DSP that comes with the, um, also is available in the suite. Oh, and when you buy the suite, you're just um, getting, it's like the easy button. You just, everything that is part of that suite, every one of every one of those items <clears throat> is included in the, um, in the actual suite. So um, I don't know what page that's on, but you can check it. It's very early on. Um, it's, I don't know, nine or 10, page nine or 10. So let me show you how I did this. I just uh, chose this, uh, it's a little bit different DSP from the one I originally chose. And um, so this die just takes a six by six. And actually, if you move it over just a smidge, you probably could have another little border here. So I always save my, my extra pieces there for something uh, in the future. So let's start with this one. I wanted to show you the difference between um, when we crop it with the DSP as opposed to when we're using the craft paper. And I'll show you that later. That's a new addition to that uh, also available in that suite. So, um, and those are six by six too. So that's, that's a, you know, a great convenience to have also. So you can see here on the die, we have scoring lines and the outside is the cutting lines. But what we have is, um, there's like 11 dies, I think, included in this set. And you can um, just make it however you want it by just um, adding in different different dies for uh, different prints or, or patterns that you want. So we are gonna use this one, but we'll use that on the craft paper. So, so all I did here was I just ran this through the Big Boss machine and um, came out with this. Now you'll see that it's a little, with the um, DSP, it's a little difficult, but to see the score lines, but you can. So you just, um, always when I go through it, I don't really wanna do it too hard because it is only DSP and I didn't wanna break through it. But I just use my fingers to burnish those uh, score lines. Now you can see here, not sure if you can see, but right here, maybe if I push it down a little bit. This, um, you don't even need the um, bone folder for these because it goes down, um, follow the lines and it goes in nice and easy. Okay, so we're just gonna do that to 
both sides and that's really the die is doing all the work for us and then that will go in there all right so that's that's it and these are so darn cute that um you could just put anything in there the tiniest little thing and it's going to make for a gorgeous little gift box a treat box so what we're going to do here this is how it's going to fold over and i found that um because we wanted to do things, the paper, that it's not exactly uh, meant to do, I found that it helped a little bit if we just rounded it out with our bone folder, just to kind of give it the message of what we wanted to do. And we do want it to bend a little bit, but that's just not the natural grain. So I think that will help. All right, so before you do any of the adhering, you um, just give it a little a little uh, twist with your bone folder. See how much easier that comes back. And then the only other reminder is to uh, make sure that since this is the front, it's gonna flap over like that, that you want your ends to be facing the back. So I'm just going to take these, these will be my ends, and I'm going to use the Stamp and Seal Plus. Um, I'm sure you could use the regular, whoops, this might be too strong for it. Hold on a second. All right, let me go back to my regular because I think, well, for the, for the cardstock, we definitely need something stronger, but I think this is fine for here. All right, so I'm just gonna fold them over, go according to my score lines, stick my finger inside there, and just give it a good press. Okay, and, oh, and I went the wrong way. All right, I'll leave that one there, but this one, this is how you're supposed to do it. Not that it matters, but I think I prefer it to go towards the back, and I'm just going to press that down, okay? So now we have one on each side. And look how pretty that is. And I think that um, using the bone folder really helps to keep this nice uh, curvy shape. All right, so for this now, there's a few options that we have to close this. And um, you could just make it a, a one-time disposable treat holder and put a glue dot there. And once it's open, it's done for. Um, or if you wanted to be able to open and close it, this is what I did here. So let's just do some stamping. We'll get our sentiment tag ready to go. I'm using the Real Red. And I'm going to use, um, let's see, I have my tags all cut out. So, all right, I'm going to use this one. I believe this is from the seasonal Christmas um, tags that came with the Christmas season um, bundle, which I made like a whole bowl full of those because I know I'm going to be using them. Now, when I'm stamping this, I'm going to stamp over to the left a little bit just so I have some room for my peppermints on the side. And what I did here was, oh, I also cut out, now I'll show you, these are from, um, I do have two on hand, these little peppermints, and these came right from the Frosted Gingerbread Bundle. So I just stamped this one stamp, which is um, has all three uh, images on one stamp, but when you crop it out with this baby, it gives you three separate images. So. That's what I did. I just stamped it in uh, real red, and um, then I just cropped it out onto the white. And I used, oh, actually, wait, I'm wrong. Hold on. I didn't. This one I took from this set, and um, the, you're right. This, this is what I did with the, um, with the real red. I'm totally confusing myself here. So yeah, I used this. I didn't use a stamp, I just used the die. So real red and then the basic white for that and pop that right out there. Okay, so we're going to, and I have a bunch of, I'll show you, I think I have two or three peppermints in there. So I'm just going to take my label 
from my sentiment and put it sort of um, down further. So it, it is going to be halfway, on, you know, halfway at the middle point. But again, I want this to do something it's not naturally going to do. So I'm going to give this a little help also. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a rounding. Okay, and then I'll put some adhesive on the top here. And then this can go right there. Okay, now that is not going anywhere, but we ha still have to close it. So what I want to do is take my real, um, this red ribbon, which is the, uh, from the new catalog also. It's just red sheer ribbon. And I'm just going to, oh, this slipped a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap this around and make a bow but I'm going to make it on the side more so that, um, let's get that over here. And if you need to put a little glue dot on that back piece so that it will hold the ribbon while you're working with it. Let me get that up here. And, oops, so it's good enough. At least I know it's going to, um, it's gonna help close it. And uh, also, another tip would be to fill this before you do this ribbon. Just put anything in there. Put your, your Tombow glue or anything that you can fit in there because you're not squishing it like I am here. Okay, so you get the idea. It should be a little bit tighter, but um, we'll see. I want to make it a little smaller, and then we can do some trimming of the tails. Keep that out in front and okay so you can see you can put anything in there put a clear block anything just to help you um, to make that little uh, bow because it is so light and then what I did here was I just made sure that um, this is you can have it cover the kisses part or you can um, have it down a little bit lower and then when somebody opens it, they can still tuck it right in and close it. And I would probably um, add a little glue dot just to make sure that, uh, that, that the ribbon stays. Okay, so let me just add a few um, of my peppermints. And we'll just put that there on the tag. And one more little one. And that's there. All right, let me make sure those are on okay. Yep, they're good. Okay, so see, now if I had put something in here, let's say I put my older, my other one in there, this would be, I'd be able to make this a lot tighter. And, um, and then, we'd be able to get the tag in there a little bit easier. And when it's full, it's definitely going to, to make that connection for you. Okay. Alrighty, so that's our first one, and that's just one little hint, or you could put a glue dot, whatever. Um, the next one we're going to make is from the, um, we're gonna be using the new craft paper. And this is how it comes, it's six by six. It's just called craft paper pack. And how many do you get? You get 20 sheets. So um, so I love that. We used to have craft paper, but that's been discontinued for a while. So let's, watch, let's see if we can make this one here. What I did for this is I took a piece of um, just one of these regular craft sheets, and I did go ahead and crop out the whole pillow box. Okay, now what I want to do to this one is I want to um, emboss it with another new embossing folder. This is called Merry Melody 3D embossing folder. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that, center it, right? Just so that the notes are centered, but I mean, um, even, but that's fine. And I'm just going to do this off camera because it makes everything shake and that's no fun. So just hold one second. Okay, 
So look how pretty this is. Now, this is going to be just a little bit harder to see those score lines. So I'm going to do that right now and use my fingers for this one. And because uh, I do want to run it through the Big Boss one more time because what I want to do is take the, um, take this, whoops, my die back and I want to run this through a piece of real red because I want this little edge to show through here, okay? So all I'm gonna do is take this and run this through the die and then I'll just um, trim off just a little bit. Just We're just gonna take what we need here. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I have this piece here. I'm just going to take you can see where the, um, the lines are of where the original score lines would be, but I'm just gonna take it right to the bottom of where the stitching is. And I'm just gonna give that a snip. Okay, so we have that. All right, one more thing I want to do to the inside panel right here, and I didn't do this first because I did want the um, musical notes to be showing all the way through. So I'm going to just send this through again, and this time I want the outline to come out of that little uh, pretty edge border. Okay, let me just do that. Okay, so we're done with our um, die cutting. So let me just get these little guys out, and that looks great. All right, I'm gonna go back now and do my, uh, just one more, fold over on all of these. These are a little tough to see. If you were just using regular cardstock, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be so difficult. But um, to see, I mean, it's not difficult to do at all. But it is um, because it's this craft paper, which is much sturdier, and um, and because we went ahead and embossed it. There's there's more things going on here. So. This one, I'm just gonna give it a little press and see if I can get it all the way to meet there. Okay. Now I also found, same thing as before, this guy needs a little help too with uh, what we want him to do. So I'm going to do the same thing and try to use my bone folder to just curl the paper and just to give it an idea of what we want it to perform at. <laughs> we don't want it to be straight today. All right, again, gonna just give these other ends a little bit of a fold. And all right, so now we want this to close and it's gonna close really nicely. This one is gonna go in the back. And for these, I am going to, I learned because when I was doing my sample, um, it kept popping up, even with the snail, the um, seal plus. So I'm definitely going to use a little bit of the tear and tape today. Okay. So before we get that on there, let's put our little accent piece here. And again, I just wanted that to show up a little bit there. I see a little dot that needs to come out. Okay. All right, so again, I'm going to use tear and tape because this uh, paper is so hot, uh, <laughs> it's so hard. And I don't know, maybe when I was doing my sample, it was a very humid day here. So um, I don't know, maybe that was the case. So let me just make sure I'm on the right side here. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of tear and tape right down. This is the best when you're not really um, sure. Any, th any 3D project, I always use these, th I use this tear and tape. And I'm just gonna line it up. I just want a little bit of the red showing. Okay, there you go. All right, so it still has its fold in all other places. Now I'm just gonna give it another one here just to get that red the real red going. Okay. All right, so now this is, again, I want it to go towards the back, so I'm going to put my tear and tape on both of these ends here. 
on. Hopefully I'll go the right way this time. And I'm just going to lift this up. And the same here. And then you're just following the score lines. And the same for back here. And if it needs another little zhuzh, you just you can do that from the inside. But I don't think they're going anywhere. Okay, and then look how cute this is. And it's it's holding its shape pretty nicely. All right, so all I did now was just do a little bit of um, decorating. I took the, um, I went back to the pillow box dies and they have these beautiful little tag, um, tag dies here, right in there. So what I did was I cropped out two, one in the, in the um, pa craft paper and one in very vanilla. And the very vanilla one, I'm just going to pop this guy on here, just for a little accent piece. And he'll go right into the center. Okay. And then we will attach these two together. So I'll just put a little bit of seal here, just so I can get it to sit at an angle. Okay, I just, I like that. Alrighty, so now I have the Happy um, Holidays stamp, and I did crop out, again, this, this die set, that's why I love it, is has all these label dies, and all these different accent pieces, which are just beautiful. So let me bring this out, and I'm going to stamp it in the real red, and this will just be a little extra holiday holiday tag, but you could make it um, anything. You could make it happy birthday. Okay. And I again, I'm putting that to the left a little bit because I want to maybe add a little um, gem or something to the side. So for this one, because it is so heavy, this is definitely, uh, which one did we do? This one here. I mean, you can just feel it. It's um, definitely has more weight to it. So the question is, I don't know that um, a ribbon would actually hold that down. So for this, in this case, what I did was I just brought out some of my Velcro, little, um, I think it's 3 eighths or 5 eighths inch Velcro. And I'm just going to put one on, right on the inside here. See that? And then the other one, I will, let me just cut this off. No need to deal with two. And so this one I'm going to put on right over it, peel off the backing, but making sure that the adhesive is still there on that side. And then I don't have to worry about it. It's perfect. And if you want to just make sure you, you've got them both on tight, just give it a little extra um, squeeze, finger squeeze. All right, so now, almost done, we have the, um, or the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack that has, I don't have my white here, I think I ran out of that one, um, so I'm using the Berry Vanilla, and really all I'm going to do is just take a... Um, a long strand of it and I'm going to make a bow at the end let's see and I think I'll well, I think I'll wait until after I get my bow here get my knot at least and all right so I just thread threaded the um, the two tags right through the end there so that the, they would be loose I think I'm going to um, uh, glue them down anyway, but just so that it looks like a real tag. But it does have some movement here. All right, so I can take this and just let me give it a little trim here. And this is still staying. Let's see how the sentiment looks once we get that on. And guess what I'm doing? I'm gonna give this a little help too 
because it just won't sit right if it's flat right on there. Okay, so I'm just going to run my seal right down the middle there. And I can put this right in the center. And it fits pretty nice, um, nice and snug there. So let me just take a, take a glue dot and um, I'm just gonna add it to the, just to keep those tags a little um, centered. I'm just gonna put one right on the back there and that will go right there. Okay. All right. And there we go with that. Now let's just add a little bling. These are the wonderful gems that have come back into this catalog. They were here with us last year and I was so happy to see them come back. But I'll just put one right in the center. And let's just put one in the center here. And one more. Right here. That's why I went over to the left a little bit for that. But look how cute this is. And it opens and um, this one here, it opens and I have a Girardelli in here. That fit perfectly. And this one, I oh well, no, that's the one we just made. I have a... Um, Oh, let's see how many. I have four peppermints in here. So it could fit any kind of treat that, um, that, you're, that you're having for your, for your person that you're giving this to. So that's that. I hope that you enjoy this um, tutorial on how to work with these, um, with these pretty pillow box dies. They're in the new catalog. They'll be available on um, Tuesday, August 3rd. And um, if you have any questions about this, or you can leave me a, um, a question, you can send me a Facebook message. Um, these are on my blog today, um, I believe, yes, and um, lollipoppaperandink.com. So feel free to go over and see, and maybe um, there's more of a close-up view of some of the, uh, some of the, of the photos for you. If you are watching this on, fa on uh, YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I would love for you to um, be able to see what I have next and not mix miss my next video. And also, um, it could send you back to my blog where I do have all of my classes, clubs, and events. All right, well, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe. Bye-bye.